Hey y'all, happy Thanksgiving, or at least I think this video is gonna come out tomorrow. This is my review for The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. Um, yeah, I know it's late, it came out Sunday, but you know, life is hard, okay? So I apologize yet again. <laughs> Anywho, uh, let's get into this episode. So we left off on Lisa's insinuation about Jen getting off of Uber early. We see the ladies pressing Lisa for more details, but you know, Lisa does what she does best when she's back into a corner. I just feel so deceived. I just don't think she is who we think she is. Okay, girl, but what do you know? She said that she thinks that she was meeting up with someone other than her family. What does that mean? That is extremely arbitrary. Like, is she cheating on her husband? Was she doing like a drop off? Like what? So Meredith gets up and goes around the table to comfort Lisa in her fake tears. Lisa's just saying, you know, how betrayed she felt. And then she brings up the time when she met up with Jen. They were talking about the guy that put her on blast for uh, yelling at him. She says that afterward, you know, they hugged and everything. She went to her car and then she got text messages from Jen, you know, cursing her out, saying, how could you do this to me? And she's like, my kids are in the car. I mean, were you reading the text out loud? So now they're all comparing Jen's text messages, basically like she texts like a different person. I mean, we know that Jen is a hostile sociopath, so what do they expect? Oh, okay, I see. So they're getting random text messages from people and they're saying that they think it was Jen. Lisa's showing a text that she got receipts coming in. Racism in all caps is real. You can't hide because you and your friends think that you're better than everyone. It's all coming out. So the ladies are saying they've gotten text messages like that. Okay, I see now. A lot of people spell because in shorthand though. I know I do C-U-Z. So I'm not sure how she can correlate that to Jen. Oh, and the T just keeps on coming. So Meredith said that she hired a private investigator when she was getting these type of texts and when her son was being harassed. And then the private investigator told her that it was extremely likely it was coming from Jen. Do not F with Meredith's family. I'm telling you. Meredith then poses a question to the table. She says, who here wants to keep a friendship with Jen Shaw going forward? I mean, this is a serious question to ask because this is like a crime with victims and I get it. Like, do you want to be associated with somebody like this? I mean, Jen is still like a co-worker to most of these ladies. And I know I don't want to be associated with a co-worker that's on their way to prison. So no one raises their hand at first, but Jenny tells the table that, you know, when she first met Jen, you know, she had a great first impression and she's questioning if it feels right to just abandon her like this. And what does everyone plan to do when Jen comes around again? Like, are we just gonna ice her out? And I think Meredith does not have any problem with that. Maybe she's saying this because she hasn't been on the other side of Jen's wrath like the other ladies. Heather is a ride or die. Wow, that is the friend you wanna have. She does not care. She's like, I will still be friends with Jen. I still care for her. I will be there for her. She sees this as people kicking Jen when she's down. <laughs> Meredith's like, so are you gonna visit her in prison? Heather says, Sure, yeah, I will. This is a very interesting conversation. They're going back and forth. Like Heather is defending Jen to a T. Lisa interrupts her and is like, at what point are you being a good friend and just being fucking stupid? <laughs> For real, like you really gonna align yourself with this woman? Heather does bring up a good point. She says that y'all were all aware of Jen's toxic qualities. What's different now? Meredith is keeping it all the way real. Can we talk about all the lives that she's ruined? And I'm supposed to feel bad for her? <laughs> I get it, she is not getting the Erica Jane treatment here. She is not the victim whatsoever. I feel no sympathy for her situation. Meredith is hot. She said what she said. She says just because they're getting along right now doesn't mean she wants to be friends with her. Heather is continuing to back her friend up and then Mary pipes up and says, I've never seen potential in Jen. I've never seen the good in her. Now Mary, watch it girl. You throwing stones in the glass house right now. A glass church. So Mary's saying call her up and of course Jen is not gonna call any of these women right now. I'm really curious though when she's gonna contact the women. Heather is a good friend to a fault. Like, I think if Heather was in the same position, Jen would not be associated with her. Who? Who is this Meredith? 
Like, I am taken aback, like, by this. She makes it known, like, let me make something very clear to everyone at this table. I have been very tolerable of this woman. That is finished. Finish. I don't want her around me, my family, my home, my store. If y'all invite her, do not invite me. Damn, I heard that. And by the looks on the other ladies' faces, it is understood. I love this new Meredith. So it's the next morning, we see Jenny downstairs talking to her husband on FaceTime. Mary comes downstairs just looking, I don't know, just looking all crazy. But she's passing her, she sits right in front of Jenny. How awkward, aren't they still beefing? I mean, at least Jenny's being nice to her, tells her good morning, do you want some coffee? We don't see if she responds or not. We see the other ladies coming downstairs. So the ladies are discussing what they're gonna be doing for the day, and then we see Meredith her confessional saying that she's wondering whether or not she should tell Mary about these rumors she's heard about her. So Whitney is frying eggs right now and then I'm assuming that Mary and her aren't speaking but Mary comes up to her and is like are oh, you gonna fix me an egg too? And Whitney's like okay. <laughs> girl Whitney is better than me. I'd be like bitch I'm a little girl remember? I can't fix my own eggs so you can fix your own. I'm sorry, Whit, but those eggs do not look appetizing. We see Mary getting the eggs that Whitney cooked for her, and she says in her confession that she does not trust Whitney. So she puts the eggs in the microwave to get rid of the germs because she thinks that Whitney, I guess, doesn't wash her hands. It's really funny that she would rather just eat overcooked eggs. Next scene, we see Meredith and Lisa talking outside away from the other women. And Meredith is telling Lisa that she's still feeling some type of angst from hearing all this cryptic news about Mary, like from her friend as well as from Whitney. And she's asking Lisa, can she add anything to this? Like, does she know anything? So Lisa gives a very veiled response. She's saying that her friend Cameron took the church and Mary very seriously. All the members of Mary's church take it seriously. And she's elusive sometimes, like she disappears. And when she comes back, it's sort of like a presence. And I'm just as confused as Meredith. She then asks her, what are you trying to say? Here she goes. She's like, I'm not trying to say anything. Like I'm just saying that Cameron really must have trusted Mary. Meredith tells Lisa, if you knew all this about Cameron and what he said about Mary, why wouldn't you tell this to me? And she said that, well, you and Mary just seem like such good friends now and I really don't want to ruin that. Meredith then tells her, you know what, I think I'm just going to have a conversation with Mary. She says Mary deserves to know these cryptic things are being said about her and she says she might as well just go straight to the source about it and find out what's going on. I swear Lisa is the type to throw a rock and hide her hand. Now she's telling Meredith that she wants to keep it in confidence what Cameron told her between them two. As if they're not on a television show where Mary's gonna see this, Cameron would have seen it as well as the millions of people that watch this show. So I don't get why she's trying to keep this a secret. She doesn't like to get her hands dirty. She's very conniving. So next scene, a few of the ladies are doing a bobsledding activity. This looks fun, but definitely a Best Fiends moment. Fast forward. So while Jenny, Heather, and Whitney are bobsledding, we're now with Mary, Meredith, and Lisa as they're going shopping. I gotta say, Mary looks good in this outfit right now, but she's still being a weirdo. So all the ladies that went shopping, they're now going ice skating, and it looks like the only person that knows how to skate is Lisa. Uh, Mary is complete comedy on the ice. She's telling Lisa not to touch her because she's afraid of falling. We see Meredith who is just concerned about wearing a skater's outfit. She has no idea how to skate and she's clinging onto the railing for dear life. Next scene, we're with the group of ladies who went bobsledding and they're on their way back to the house. The topic of conversation right now is Jenny asks Whitney and Heather their relationship with Lisa right now. It seems like they're all getting along. They're also talking about Lisa's behavior when she found out all the things happened to Jen Shaw. Like how she was just mostly worried about herself and how she's affected by it. Again, Heather and Whitney knows Lisa's shady antics to a T. They're saying she loves to stir and muddy things up, but she doesn't want to get her hands dirty. She gives an example of when Lisa was telling them she knows why the feds were coming after Jen, but she didn't want to tell them why. 
She wanted them to figure it out for themselves. Whitney and Heather are slowly getting Jenny on their side as they're discussing Lisa's bullshit. So Whitney, Heather, and Jenny get back to the place. They're outside eating. None of the other ladies are there yet. They're discussing Heather and She's actually from Colorado, and she's talking about possibly getting in touch with her estranged sister. Woo child, so next scene, we are with the felon herself, Jen Shaw, and she is being filmed as she's talking to her lawyer. Has she even talked to any of the other ladies yet? And she just looking calm like nothing happened. So she's talking to her current attorney, and he's breaking it down like what she's being charged with. Wire fraud, money laundering, I mean, wow, she is really filming this. She pled not guilty to both charges. Ooh, they gonna get her in court. They are going to get that ass. Especially because her first assistant, Stu, already pled guilty. So Jen maintains her innocence in her confessional. She says if she's guilty of anything, it's helping too many people or giving too much. <laughs> Sociopath, like pathological liar, just like Erica Jean. So when I gather from this conversation with her lawyer, she is out on a million dollar bond. And I think she also had to pay 250K for something. So now she's explaining this phone call that she received and she answered on camera. Like, you know, did she lie? And she's maintaining that the person on the other line, it was somebody she thought was her husband until they told her that her husband was in the hospital. Okay, so it wasn't your husband you were talking to, allegedly. So why did you need to take your mic pack off, though? She said that the person on the other line told her to get her son and they both need to go to the hospital where her husband is. Wait, she then said she was pulled over and then she was asking is her husband or her kids okay? That, that ain't an uh, she lying. Like someone tipped her off, the feds is coming for you. She tried to get on the run and they caught that ass. She better hope she is not called to the stand because they're gonna add perjury along to the other charges she has. We see that she feels guilty that her husband and her sons have to go through this, but I don't think she really realizes the legal peril that she's in right now. Like she's trying to figure out, oh, why is this happening to me? Girl, you know what you did. Allegedly. I don't think the feds, you know, Homeland Security will come after her if they didn't have sufficient evidence of what she did. Like she did that, Rashida. So next scene, we're back with the other ladies in Vail. They're at the rental. It looks like they're having a theme night because everyone is dressed like those um, German waitresses at beer gardens. They all look ridiculous. Oh, so it's a Swiss theme. I mean, I totally got Germany, but whatever. So all the ladies are downstairs. Look like they're having fun, they're taking shots. We see Mary still upstairs being grumpy, antisocial, and weird. Why is she on this show? Why is she there? Can we please not have her on next season? Bravo, please. And they're all just tolerating her weird, rude behavior. Like she's really like a Debbie Downer. Like she's killing the mood. Yeah, she doesn't want to participate in what the ladies are doing. I'm surprised she's even dressed to the theme. So they're eating and I gotta say that cheese does look good. So here come Whitney with the shot ski and she's like, everyone stand up. Like she is so excited for this. And Mary just looks so unenthused and gives Whitney the dirtiest look. I wish one of them just throw a drink in her face. Her wig already looks like somebody did. So after they finish dinner, the ladies all go outside for dessert. I gotta say, what they're doing looks fun. Like, I wouldn't mind doing this, especially the little grill things they have at the table and other going outside and fixing s'mores. That looks fun. I want to do shit like that. Mary still looks like she's at like a colonic appointment right now. Like, she does not look happy to be there. So everyone's having a good time. They're talking to each other. I think Mary tried to say something stupid in the conversation and she gets irritated that no one's listening to her. I wouldn't listen to her either. So now she's trying to make it known to the group that she's aggravated and no one is listening to her. Oh, Mary, if you can have my seat. And everyone's just glancing at her. Like, no one really wants to confront Mary on her behavior and tell her to shut the fuck up. And I wish someone would do it. She says she doesn't want to be a Debbie Downer, but she really is. She's been a Debbie Downer since she walked in the door. Again, Mary's just saying some dumb shit, saying how Heather's supposed to be in her bed. I don't know. Like... <laughs> 
I think people are just treating her with kid gloves because she's clearly not sane. So Whitney for some reason tries to have a conversation with Mary um, discussing how Mary told her that she wasn't her friend and how that upset her. And Mary is leaning on Meredith's shoulder with her eyes closed now as Whitney is talking to her. So while Whitney is saying, Mary, you really hurt me, Mary's like, Look, yeah, I'm listening, I'm listening. Whitney calls her out like, you're falling asleep, you're not listening to me. So Whitney finally has Mary's attention and Mary tells her, you hurt my feelings too. You didn't pick up the phone for me. Didn't the girl just tell you she was driving? She says Whitney doesn't listen to her and Whitney's like, what do you mean by that, that I don't listen to you? Mary then gets aggravated like, oh Lord. As if it's out of line to question that. Whitney calls her out for being dismissive and says, I'm not your child, Mary. Mary's like, thank God. <laughs> Why are they trying to have adult conversations with this woman? She is clearly not on planet Earth. I think what's driving me crazy is all the other ladies are seeing this and observing how Mary's behavior is and they're not saying anything about it. So Mary just gets up from the conversation. She says she's done. In her confessional, she's saying that Whitney is drunk and she's not even gonna remember this conversation that they had. So then Meredith gets up to follow Mary, possibly to talk some sense into her. She tells Mary that Whitney just wants to hear that you love her. And Mary's like, not tonight, maybe another day. Leave Mary alone. Let that cockadoo be. Then we see Whitney talking to the other ladies about Mary's behavior, saying that she's the only one Mary does this to. Lisa's like, oh, she does it to me too. <laughs> she treats everybody like that. That's why I'm wondering why are they putting up with this woman? Whitney says she feels like she's been excommunicated from Mary's church, which then sparks the conversation about all the rumors circulating about Mary. So Lisa's ears perk up and she's like, what do you mean? As if Lisa don't know already. So then Whitney says, yeah, like the congregation like thinks that she's God. Okay, Whitney looks a little tipsy right now. I, I see it now, the way she's talking. We see Lisa looking nervous now that she knows that what her friend Cameron said is out there. Lisa's trying to clear it all up, but Heather's like, yes, because he's a disgruntled member of Mary's church. Lisa's like, no, that's not what it is. And if you're trying to find out, you should ask him. And Heather's like, he clearly told you as an effort to get the word out. So now even Jenny and Meredith are asking, what did Cameron say exactly to you? And here go Lisa again. People need to trust me with sharing things. And now Jenny says in her confessional, she sees what people are saying about Lisa. Finally. Ooh, Heather is laying in on Lisa. She's saying, you telling me that you have a friend that's a victim of Mary's church and we're friends with Mary and you refuse to tell us what's going on? Ooh, press her. And now Meredith drops a bombshell saying that she talked to Mary already. Lord, and now production is giving us a Shonda Rhimes rewind. And we see her telling Mary that there's rumors involving her church going around about her. So Mary is playing cool like most liars do. Then she tells Mary that if her grandmother told her it's not who tells the lies, who believes it. Then fast forward to Meredith telling the other ladies that Mary told her what church or religion you know that people don't have negative things to say about. Um, the ones that aren't cults. How about that? And then Meredith said that was a good enough response for her. So she's currently waging war with Jen Shaw and all her victims, but with Mary and her victims, her explanation is okay. Are they all drunk? Lisa continues to be Switzerland in the matter. The irony of her being dressed like that as well. And Heather asks her exactly, did he tell you anything that Mary did to him? Lisa then says her friend Cameron has extreme religious trauma. What the fuck is that? Her friend Meredith even calls her out. She's like, Lisa, that is the most arbitrary thing I've ever heard. What is it? Yeah, Meredith's getting hot. You see the vein in that neck and the head bobbing as she's talking to Lisa. I'm getting angry and upset. I can't go in all these circles. So as Meredith is talking, she needs a concrete example. Lisa finally spits it out. She says he took out a mortgage for $300,000 and gave it to Mary. Woo, finally, finally. If anybody could get it out of Lisa, it was Meredith. And that is how they end the episode. Wow, okay. Um, Salt Lake City has definitely stepped it up. 
Thank you, ladies. It's so funny. Like, we're getting a transition from Jen Shaw's mess to Mary's mess. I hope they don't, like, pivot just to Mary. Like, we didn't forget about you, Jen Shaw. And then it's interesting seeing the preview because Jen isn't even in it. So I'm guessing it's all going to be about Mary? Wow. This was unexpected. Anywho, y'all, it's getting late over here. I'm about to edit this to make sure it's out on Turkey Day. Uh, by the way, on my Patreon, I just started reviewing The Real Housewives Ultimate Girls Trip on Peacock. It's going to be an exclusive to my Patreon for a while until it's on YouTube. So if you're interested, it's patreon.com slash cdiggy1. And with that, make sure y'all like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see y'all for the next episode. Bye.